My name is Alex Dolphin, and welcome back to another episode of Ex Ante. Today we're going to discuss the case of Hess v. Pawlowski. This case heard in the Supreme Court of the United States in the year 1927. Let's go ahead and jump into the facts of the case. So Hess is the plaintiff in this instance, and Pawlowski is the defendant. What you need to know is that there was a case that took place before this case. Um, in that case, Pawlowski was suing Hess. Now, Pawlowski sued Hess uh, because Pawlowski was injured in a car accident where Hess hit him. Typical tort lawsuit, personal injury, car accident. And what's interesting about it is that Hess was a citizen of Pennsylvania, whereas um, Pawlowski was a citizen of Massachusetts. Um, the accident occurred on a Massachusetts state highway. So what Pawlowski did was he used, um, there was a state statute on the books that allowed non-residents of the state to be sued if you sent them service via certified mail. Now certified mail is just uh, a heightened um, version of, of mail where you get a receipt when it comes back. It's just more official. It costs more money from the United States Postal Service, but um, there's a receipt when someone receives it. So you actually can know that someone uh, receives the mail. So certified mail. Um, the statute allowed Pawlowski to serve Hess via certified mail. Um, there was a judgment entered, um, typical case, it was lock solid for Pawlowski. Pawlowski won, received the judgment. Um, now Hess was frustrated with this. Um, Hess was frustrated because a case before this, Penoyer v. Neff, which I'm sure you'll recognize, didn't allow states um, to sue other residents um, without actual service um, if that person was present in the state, right, or unless they consented to it. Because Hess wasn't domiciled in the state, he wasn't actually in the state when he was served, um, and because he didn't consent to that jurisdiction in Massachusetts, he's arguing that his due process um, under the 14th Amendment has been robbed. So he appeals this to the Supreme Court of the United States. The Supreme Court has an, uh, an interesting case before it because it has to decide whether it's going to expand the concept of personal jurisdiction to allow states um, to have personal ju jurisdictions over uh, non-residents that use their in-state highways. Now, um, the court answers that question rather quickly. Um, it says that Hess was not robbed of, uh, of his due process under the law and that this exercise of jurisdiction um, is constitutional by the state of Massachusetts. So the Supreme Court expands personal jurisdiction um, from what was uh, originally the original conception in Penoyer v. Neff to a broader conception to encompass non-residents traveling on state highways. So they affirm the decision of the lower court um, and they say that yes, Massachusetts can exercise jurisdiction over Hess in this case, even though he is a resident of Pennsylvania because he was using a, a state highway um, and because uh, Massachusetts had a law on the books that allowed um, it to exercise jurisdiction over non-residents. Um, if, if they're traveling on state highways. So that's the case. A uh, few implications from this. You see uh, that the concept of personal jurisdiction needs to be expanded in the era of automobiles. Um, and this is just the, the, the first domino in the stack. You'll see that this goes further and further and further um, as we get to the international shoe case, um, as we get to gray versus American radiator. Um, the court is really dealing with uh, a society where non-residents of states travel back and forth between states and the court is having to basically scrape away, uh, throw away some conceptions of federalism in favor of justice and allowing states to exercise um, jurisdiction over non-residents to perform justice in the country. Um, and you basically can't hide behind state lines. So they expand personal jurisdiction. Um, just an example that would show you why personal jurisdiction needs to be expanded even more is um, right now, it only applies to non-residents traveling on highways. Well, there's going to be plenty of other lawsuits where non-residents, you know, come to another state um, and they commit some type of tort, they commit some type of um, egregious wrong, and they need to be sued, but they're not present in the state any longer. So if it's, this is only going to apply to uh, car accidents, um, whereas this needs to be expanded um, later, and you'll see the court do that um, in international shoe. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see more, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and I hope you have a nice rest of your day. Bye-bye.